Acts chapter number 9. And uh, what we are doing is we're studying the Bible and looking at the earlier, earliest churches uh, in the New Testament. And we're, we're going to compare the notes that we learn uh, uh, about what is a church. And then we look at the scriptures to see if they, uh, if the churches in uh, Acts match the church uh, description that we find in the Bible. You know, are they a uh, organized assembly, a visible organized assembly of baptized disciples? Uh, we know that scripturally, that's the definition of a church. And so when we look at the scriptures, do we see, do we find a visible organized assembly of baptized disciples? And then we call that the church. And uh, we've looked at a number of them already. Uh, if you remember, uh, we looked at the church in Jerusalem. Uh, that was pastored, of course, by Jesus first, and then it was pastored by uh, Peter. And then when Peter went out for, to do missionary work, to do church planting work, uh, James took over pastoring the church at Jerusalem. So he would be the third uh, pastor of that church. And then that church, of course, started all churches all everywhere, the church in Samaria, was established. We talked about that. So let me get my map over here, just so that we'll we, we we will build upon the things that we're learning about. Somebody now. <clears throat> okay. Let me get that drawing here. So we see. <clears throat> And uh, there's Lake Hulda. I want to use my my blue one for the lake. Lake Hulda here. Lake Galilee and the Jordan River and the Dead Sea. <clears throat> and this is the Mediterranean Sea. Waves there. <clears throat> So we see the coast of Israel. Jerusalem will be right here, right around here. And uh, <clears throat> there's a church in Samaria that was planted. We looked at the church in Samaria. Uh, and in the city of Samaria, there's, uh, in the region of Samaria, there's a city called Samaria. And in the region of Judea is the city of Jerusalem. And so there's a church in Jerusalem, there's a church in Samaria. Uh, then we looked at Lydda. Then we looked at Joppa. And there were saints, there were disciples, believers in Lydda and Joppa. What does that mean if they're saints and disciples? They were churches, exactly. Uh, they were visible, organized assembly of baptized disciples. Then, of course, uh, Peter preached here, and he went up here to Caesarea, Caesarea Maritima, which is the coastal Caesarea, not to be confused with the Caesarea up here, Caesarea Philippi, two Caesareas. <clears throat> this is where Jesus said uh, to Peter, uh, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's the church up here. Okay, so you can see the church at Jerusalem started in Galilee. Galilee is here. And then they traveled and dis baptized and discipled believers and then organized them. And whoever came with Jesus came with Jesus until there was 120 of them in Jerusalem. And then there were churches planted everywhere. <clears throat> throughout this time. And so, one other church that's very significant that we will read about in Acts chapter 9, isa sa mga churches na napaka-importante, na hindi karaniwang binabanggit ng mga iba na church, pero ito po ay church. 
Okay, there's a lot of churches that um uh, there's a lot of churches that are not mentioned, but they are churches because a lot of evangelical Bible teachers don't apply the principle of a local New Testament church uh, in the Bible, but we will. Okay, look for example in Acts chapter nine. Now, in Acts chapter 9, yung binasa natin kanina, natuklasan natin na si Saul ay isang persecutor. <clears throat> Now, he was a persecutor, and he has, uh, he, uh, he has authority uh, from the high priest to shut down churches and to bring men and women to prison for practicing Christianity, for having churches, for assembling, okay? Uh, and so, uh, hindi, hindi tumigil sa pagpupulong ang mga simbahan dahil hindi sila pinayagan ng gobyerno. So, bagamat hindi sila pinayagan ng gobyerno, sila pa rin ay pumulong dahil ito ay ang paraan ng pagsasamba sa Panginoon ay pagpupulong. So, yung pagpupulong talaga, hindi ho yan optional. <laughs> hindi katulad ngayon, no? May live stream tayo, no? Mas maganda yung church noon. Anyway. <clears throat> so, but, Paul was a persecutor, and uh, Paul uh, had the authority to bring them to prison if they will not recant And uh, what we read about here, verse number three, and as he journeyed, Acts chapter nine, verse three, and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. So where is Damascus here? Where is Damascus here? Damascus is up north, far up north in Syria. There's Damascus in Syria. So it's a totally different land. But he's heading up to Damascus, and he got saved along the way, okay? So, what's he trying to shut down in Damascus? What do you think he's trying to shut down? A church! Oh, <laughs> you see? There's a church in Damascus that he's trying to shut down, you see? Now, is there a visible, organized assembly of baptized disciples in Damascus? Well, let's take a look. Let's see what it says here. So, verse number 10, And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. Well, we know there's one disciple whose name is Ananias. And to him, the Lord uh, said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the street, verse number 11, which is called straight and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. By the way, Tarsus is up here, way up north here, Tarsus. That's where Paul is from. This would be in Pisidia, a whole nother, this is Syria, this is Pisidia, huh. a whole nother, uh, a whole nother region, but that's where Saul is originally from, Tarsus. <clears throat> anyway, uh, for behold, he prayeth and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him and he might, that he might receive sight. Look at verse 13. Then... Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard many, uh, by many of this man, how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. What did they, what did they call the church at Jerusalem? The saints at Jerusalem. So these words, when you study the New Testament, local churches, usually they're called saints. Disciples, brethren, brethren, 
first two. <laughs> These are all names or what they called churches in the Bible. <clears throat> the saints at Jerusalem, what is that saints at Jerusalem referring to? The church at Jerusalem. So there's a, is there a church at Jerusalem? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, last week, we saw that um, the church at Joppa, they were called the disciples. The... <clears throat> The church at Lydda, Lydda, they were called the saints, to the saints, you see. And uh, in Acts chapter 12, verse 29, the churches of Galilee, Samaria, and uh, Judea were called the brethren. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, the brethren. See? Saints, disciples, brethren. Mamaya pa sa Acts, uh, sa Acts chapter 15 tatawagin Christians. Okay, but Christian will come in later. But uh, <clears throat> they're not just believers that are not associated with the church. The Bible assumes that they are Baptized disciples, baptized saints, baptized brethren, church members, nobody in the New Testament uh, except for the thief on the cross uh, is, is a, uh, wasn't a church member, presumed to be a church member. They all belong somewhere. <clears throat> the uh, Ethiopian eunuch was baptized. What, what church did he join? <laughs> well, presumably, he joined the church in Jerusalem. And then when he went back home to Ethiopia, where, where is Ethiopia here? Well, you have over here is Egypt. And over here is, would be Ethiopia, somewhere down there. <clears throat> and where did, where, did, uh, where did he go? He went back to Ethiopia and most likely planted a church there. And now there's a bunch of Coptic churches in Ethiopia, historically. And so anyway, the point I'm making is every saints, disciples, and brethren, and Christian are associated with the local church. They were there. They were members of the church. And so is there a church in Damascus? Well, <clears throat> let's look at... Um, Verse number 14, Acts chapter 9, verse 14. And here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, putting his hand on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the, the way, as thou camest, has sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> and immediately there fell from his eyes that had been scales, and he received sight, forthwith arose and was, what? baptized wait a minute is there an institution that is authorized to baptize yes there is what is the only organization organism institution created by jesus christ that is authorized to baptize the local church the church so there's a church in damascus that's Authorized to baptize. So is this a church? Yes, it is, you see. <clears throat> That's why we know there's a church there. And most likely Ananias was the pastor. Because the Lord spoke to the pastor and told the pastor how to run the church. What to do next. 
That's exactly how the Lord operates today. In every church, there's a, an elder, a bishop, an overseer, a pastor, a man of God appointed, the appointed preacher and teacher in the assembly. <laughs> That's the, uh, the under shepherd, okay? Uh, uh, feed the flock of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. The, the man responsible to feed the flock with the word of God. And so... That would have been Ananias. <clears throat> now, let's look at what, what, how, what else the Bible says. Look at verse 19, Acts chapter 9, verse 19. So, Paul was baptized. What member, what church is Saul or Paul a member of? The one mystical, universal body of Christ? No. <laughs> he became a member of the church at Damascus, in Syria. <laughs> so, uh, look at verse number 19. And when he had received meat, and he was strengthened, then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. What were they called? Oh, disciples, you see. And so this is presumed in Scripture to be a local New Testament, visible, organized assembly of baptized disciples. You see, so Saul became a member of the church at Damascus. So he wasn't just baptized and didn't have a church membership and just did what he wanted to do. No, <laughs> he joined himself to, with the disciples. <clears throat> now, so, uh, look at verse number. Look at verse number twenty. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. So uh, Paul or Saul began a public ministry after his baptism, after his church membership. So you cannot function in the ministry without first submitting yourself to baptism. And you cannot submit yourself to baptism without first trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. You see, the order in the New Testament is simple. Saul got saved when Jesus confronted him on the road to Damascus. And then Saul joined the church at Damascus by submitting himself to baptism. And then after his baptism, he preached. He began his evangelistic ministry. Did you know that Jesus didn't preach until after he was baptized by John the Baptist? You see, the order is very important. Salvation first, then baptism, then church membership, then ministry. You know, so on and on it goes. Now look at verse 23. And after many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. So approximately three years is what we have, uh, or more, that uh, Saul ministered in Damascus of Syria. <clears throat> then the Jews wanted to kill him, and he escaped through a basket. They put him down, and he took off, and where did he go? He went to join himself to the church at Jerusalem, the big church at Jerusalem. Let's look at that. <clears throat> Verse 25, Acts chapter 9, verse 25. Then the disciples, again, what we call them, the disciples, took him by night and led him down by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, the church at Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples. That's what they were called, disciples. But they're not just evangelical disciples. These are baptized disciples. We already know that from uh, our doctrine that we've studied about. <clears throat> you see, but he essayed to join himself. He wanted to become a member of that church in Jerusalem. He essayed to join himself. But they were not quick to receive him because they were fearful that he was a persecutor. And of course, you see how far Syria is from Judea. And so 
it's not an easy journey. And so communication, they didn't have Facebook <laughs> and they didn't have instant messenger where, you know, they could share instantly, hey, Saul's okay now, he's saved, you know. So I'm sure the, the brethren, the disciples at Jerusalem were probably shocked to, to, to realize uh, what, what happened with this guy. <clears throat> and so, verse 26, And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. It's been three years since he's been saved, three years since he's been preaching at Damascus. But uh, due to uh, the distance and lack of communication, you can understand why the disciples at Jerusalem were not ready to receive Saul. But except for one disciple, verse number 27, but Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way that he had spoken to him and how that he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And when he was with, uh, and what, and he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. So basically, because of Barnabas, they received um, Saul, and uh, and uh, Saul was able to live with them and eat with them and function with the church and minister to the people through the church. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord, verse 29, and disputed against the Grecians, and they went about to slay him. So he, uh, Saul was so powerful in his preaching and teaching ministry that the Grecians uh, wanted to kill him. And so what did the church at Jerusalem do? Uh, which when the brethren, the brethren, you see the names, the brethren, the disciples, the saints, all of that is what we call the members of the church, <clears throat> of the churches. Uh, which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea. They brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. They returned him to his hometown, to where he grew up. Most likely that's where his family is, his mom, dad, sister, or whatever family members he had. Uh, and uh, they sent him forth to Tarsus, and he lived there probably 10 years, you know, uh, out back home and you know what did he do back home most likely he preached and teach most likely he did evangelistic work this is tarsus where he's from most likely tarsus <clears throat> is where he would work with his hands to, su to support himself he was a bivocational missionary a bivocational church planter uh he uh tent made tents and su supported himself and uh, preach the gospel, no doubt. Uh, were churches established? We don't know. Um, I, I would tend to think that there were churches there, but we don't see that in the scriptures. And so we, we have to be quiet, silent, where the scriptures are silent. But if the pattern is true, uh, he's not interested in just preaching and having converts and the converts not, not becoming disciples, you see. Uh, so we don't know the... Uh, obscurity of uh, Paul's um, uh, Syria and Tarsus ministry. The silent years, we would call that. The silent years. This is where Paul said he was whipped. You know, 39 times he was whipped. Uh, where, we don't read that anywhere in the book of Acts where he experienced it, but he reports that he did. So this was most likely where he was whipped in Tarsus. This is the time where he most likely felt the rejection from his family. They probably rejected him because he's a turncoat uh, Jew, uh, you know. <clears throat> so uh, he suffered many things, <clears throat> and that's just the beginning of Paul's ministry. Now, there's another church. We'll go over to Acts chapter number 11. Acts chapter number 11, we'll just end with this church. Acts chapter number 11 and verse number 20. Acts chapter 11, verse number 20. And some of them, well, let's go ahead and read, uh, read verse 19. 
Now they, which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen, traveled as far as Phoenice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. So because of the persecution, uh, Christians were scattered everywhere. And some of the Christians were scattered up here in Antioch. Same location as Syria. So this is the Antioch, and there's two Antiochs in the Bible. One Antioch is in uh, Asia Minor, up north, way over here. <laughs> I'm already beyond my board, <laughs> way over here. And there's the Antioch in Syria, which is closer to Jerusalem. That's this church here, Antioch. <clears throat> and that's where... Uh, this Bible verse, Acts chapter number 11 and verse number 19 is talking about. Verse number 20, look at Acts chapter 11, verse 20. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the Lord Jesus. So these disciples were church planters and they, they were from Cyprus. Uh, they were from uh, Cyrene and Cyprus, far away. And then they went into Antioch in Syria, and they preached the word of God, and people believed on the Lord, and they, they wanted to establish a church. They were church planters, these strangers of Syria and Cyprus. So what did they do? They went to Jerusalem and said, hey, do you have somebody... Uh, who can come up to help us plant this church. And look over now in uh, verse number 21. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to, unto the Lord. Verse 22. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which is in Jerusalem. And they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch who when he came had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all with purpose of heart that they, should, they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people were added unto the Lord. So Barnabas joined the church planting team at Antioch, Syria, and helped them to establish a church and many people were getting saved and baptized and added to the Lord, is how the Bible puts it. <clears throat> Verse 25, then departed Barnabas to Tarsus. What did Barnabas know? Barnabas knew, hey, we sent Paul back to Tarsus. I wonder what Paul's doing over there. Paul, hey, are you, are you, can you come over here and help us establish this church? <clears throat> And when he had found him, verse 26, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. So... In the Bible, where when you see Christian, when you see brethren, when you see disciple, when you see saint, that's presumed, that's presumed to, to be presumed as a church member, you see. It's not just isolated cases. And so now you have a thriving church at Antioch with the men of Cyrene and Cyrus, Barnabas, and now Saul over working together, assembling together with the believers, the disciples that are now called Christians. And so I hope you see that the Bible is full of churches. It's all about churches. Uh, the, the dispensation today is the church age. God is interested in working through his local New Testament biblical churches. And every church, as you see, has a location. 
Every church is an assembly, an organized assembly of baptized disciples. There is not one mystical universal church that when somebody is saved, they're just automatically uh, in the body, you know, this mysterious body of Christ. It doesn't, it's not in the, in the Bible. But what we do see in the Bible is that when a, when a person gets saved, they, uh, they surrender to baptism, they're added to the church, they can function in ministry. And then that church plants other churches, you see. Church, all these churches came from the church of Jerusalem, you see. All right, we're going to continue next week and learn uh, that Barnabas and Saul will go on from Antioch, guess what, to plant more churches. Why? Because this is what God's program is about. You want to be involved in God's plan for today? For this dispensation, you better be involved in church, you see. Be involved in the work of, of a local New Testament church. <clears throat> Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, na nakikita po namin ang example ng Bible patungkol sa mga churches. Nawa, Panginoon, kami po ay maging masigla at masigasig na kami ay part ng plano ng Panginoon para magtaguyod ng mga churches na magmamahal sa kaluluwa ng mga tao at um, uh, ipagpapatuloy ang mga pag-aaral na pinag-aaralan namin patungkol sa Panginoong Yeso Kristo, sa disiplina ng buhay at uh, pagpapahayag ng salita ng Diyos sa pamamagitan ng mga simbahan ng mga iglesia, Lord. I-bless niyo po kami ngayon, alang-alang kay Yeso Kristo, ito pong aming mga dalangin. Amen. And amen.